Welcome to HKB, I'm Leon. I'm Shaz. And today we're doing the first in a two-part episode where we compare Yu Po Chuan and Sex and Sen. Please enjoy episode one on Yu Po Chuan from 1987. So, Yu Po Chun from 1987 is actually Yu Po Chun 2. The first one was also directed by Hell Fan, but was more of a modern day take on the same storyline. This one that was released in 1987 was made by Silverbird Films. The release we have is by Panorama as part of their Hong Kong classic movies range. The disc is Region A. Film is 93 minutes. It's a Category 3 film and it's a sort of adult mature romance. Starring in this one are Dennis Tang as Wei Yang Sheng, Cheng Yun Man as Yu Zhang, Xiao Ying Ti as the woodcutter's wife, Eliza Yu as Bei Zhang Yun, Sun Qian of the Venom Mob as the woodcutter and Rico Chu Takon as Sei Kanlun, the master burglar and this one was directed by Ho Fan and the screenwriter is Hong Kong Blu-ray's favourite Manfred Wong so we have a synopsis for you from Trouble D House and it goes as follows an adaption of the classic Chinese erotic novel, Cornel Promat, Cornel Desire, follows a hedonistic scholar's effort to live life to the fullest. Leaving his life to embark on his own sexual escapades, his journey ultimately delivers more than the pleasures of the flesh. Lessons in vanity, jealousy and karma interrupt his quest for complete sexual indulgence. Wow, so what a lot of people might not know is that this is the same story as Sex and Zen, but this film came before by a number of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're actually going to do in this video and the next one is we're going to compare the two. So first up is this one, Yu Poi Chun, and then next week we're going to have Sex and Zen, and then we're going to have a little recap and decide which one we think is better. So, what were your thoughts on Yu Poi Chun? Well, I actually really enjoyed this film. I could sort of see the emotional story behind all of the frolicking and sex scenes. Um, I felt it was sort of looked at quite tenderly. Um, and you felt a real bond between the main character and his wife that he then later leaves to go exploring his sexual fantasies with other women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I really liked it. What did you think? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think when it comes to these kind of films, it's very easy to look at the surface and all mm. the gloss that's on there. A lot of people come to it and they think, oh, this is just a film about sex, about tits and ass. That's all it's got going for it. Why not watch a porno? Now, I call bullshit on that. Sometimes you bring to a film what you see. Mm. You need to look a little bit deeper sometimes. And this is a prime example. There's um, depth in this story. Yeah, okay, we do have a little bit of titillation in there, but it's very artistically done. Yes. It's beautifully filmed. Yes. And the relationships are well established. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, the bond between our lead and his wife, they spend quite a bit of time building that up and they mm. show them mm. happy together. And I really feel like an emotional bond between those two characters. Yeah. And what follows it's kind of a tragic and it's like a classic it's the you know the cl cliche sort of story of the grass isn't always greener 
mm. or wanting to have your cake and eat it. You know what I mean? I think that's it's very much like a warning film, like in Fatal Attraction, you know, with Michael Douglas, he's kind of, and Glenn Klaus, he's kind of, that film was a message, do not cheat on your wife, this could happen. There's similar messages in this, where he's indulging himself in his fantasies, as you said. Yeah, and he doesn't seem to think there's going to be any comeback. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think his character is particularly malicious. I think, if anything, he's a little naive, mm -hmm. which you'd think, how can you be naive and go off wanting to cheat on your wife with lots of different women? But I think that he was, and he didn't th think about the consequences of his actions. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, it's put across in a nice way as well. Mm. Um, you know, what's going on in his head, you get a lot of imagery which is like dream sequences yes the dream sequences and there's almost like foreshadowing in, in the dream yeah. sequences yes. yeah some yeah. of the stuff you see i mean they are great the, the way they're shot i mean the the opening dream sequence really colorful and yeah, yeah. it does kind of set the tone for the nudity and everything because there's quite a bit at the beginning mm. and you know for all you foot fetishists out there there's dream sequence for you in this with um, you know a lot of feet in it so mm. you know that was quite amusing but um no I thought it was beautifully dressed beautifully shot dream sequences were really well done because it's given yeah. us an insight into his psyche yeah and I thought the performances were great too this was mm. I mm. it did have comedy in it and it had some really funny scenes but I thought it was quite serious I thought the the music was really good. Yes, it was. Some of the mm -hmm. settings were fantastic. Even yeah. like we had the, the snowy sequences and that always looks good on oh, film. Oh, yes. Yes, that was lovely. Yeah? You like that? Yeah, it really good. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you like the comedy elements that were in it? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't think yeah. it detracted too much from the dramatic side? No, I think it had the right balance. Mm -hmm. I think you needed the odd bit of humour, but it wasn't too much. No. I don't think it took anything away from the more serious side of the story. No, I think you needed that moment of like levity because otherwise, mm. you know, it does a little bit dark, a little bit sad, tragic in places. Yeah. But some of the funny scenes, like, um, you know, there's one scene where he's having sex with one lady and she's using a, a foot to operate some oh, sort yeah. of fan yeah. to cool yeah. them down. Yeah. That was that quite was good. Funny. Yeah. And then there's another scene where he hasn't quite finished so he goes underneath this bed oh, yeah, yeah. and there's a hole in it that. so he can you know come up from underneath and the, the woman's then hid herself on top of the bed whilst he's still at her and um, her husband comes back with a couple of scholars and uh, she starts dishing out the cards that's yeah that is a little bit slapsticky but yeah, um, yeah. you know that probably <laughs> that, that probably for me was the the most odd bit in the film mm. for the tonally for the rest of it yeah yeah it was a bit odd wasn't it but um yeah and also you know shout out to our friend the fanatical dragon he might be a bit surprised having uh sun chien the scorpion from the five venoms in this film yeah yeah what did you think having sun chien in this i mean i i i didn't expect it i didn't know he was in this no no but he he played a good role Mm -hmm. He's very good. Yeah. Yeah, he's, um, I, I think, um, you know, it was a different role for him. Mm, and yeah. I think he put his all into it. And yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, there's some good acting chops from him in this. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. I, you know, I could see yeah. his emotion on his face and stuff. Yeah, you think he was, he was good at that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. So you've got any, any other thoughts on this film? Before we uh, move on with it, um, I think really it was it was just spectacular, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I think this one was a category three film that we both really enjoyed. Not everybody's always on the same page of us, and we really respect that. Um, we do have like a soft spot for these films, mm. but we would like to point out sometimes dig a little deeper because one or two of them you might like 
And as for us, this one we really enjoyed. I thought it was spectacular as well. I am scoring it 8 out of 10. That's exactly the same as me. 8 out of 10. Well there you go folks, we are both blown away by this one. The package on this one was scoring 2 stars. We have a slip case. Always like those. We have a postcard. And then on the cover is the same image as on the slipcase. And we have some interior imagery as well, as you can see. And the only extra on the disc is a trailer. The picture, we're scoring three stars. It was good, um, but not consistent. Sometimes it felt a bit like DVD quality, didn't it? Yeah. I'd say. The audio were given three stars. There was um in the background at points it sounded like uh, when you get to the end of a vinyl record with a little bit of the crackling. It wasn't too mm -hmm. off putting and if anything it kind of almost fit the movie and felt yeah. oddly comforting but yeah. Mm. Subtitles were scoring three stars. Um there were quite a lot of errors. Mm. Yeah they were clear but the mm -hmm. errors were there weren't they? Yeah. So, how are we doing for availability on this one, Shaz? Um, I can only find it available at Triple D House um, for about £16. Right, okay. So, we'll put that purchase link and any others we can find in the description. We'd like to give a quick shout out to Andrew at Amphlet Reviews. He very kindly gave us um, a shout out on his recent Category 3 special which was really good. It was really good to see a different take on it, a different yeah. opinion. Yeah. Um, we recommend that you go on over there and check out his video. He's really good, his channel's excellent. He has some really quality content over there. So we'll put a link in so you can go and check that out too. We hope you've enjoyed part one of our two part comparison between You Poitoon and Sex and Zen. If you did, Give us a like, it lets us know we're doing well and it helps the channel out as well. And thanks to everyone for all your support. We look forward to seeing you next time for part two of our comparison. And remember folks, be true and buy the blue.